Our epistle reading today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 15 through 17, and then verses 23 and 24. It says, I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The, the cup of the blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That today, we, as we come to Maundy Thursday, we come to this whole idea of that there is so much that we could talk about. <laughs> that there is so much that happens in Jesus' life in such a short span. All of the things that happen and all of the things that are there. From the very fact that one of his closest followers, Judas, decides to go ahead and take the 30 pieces of silver and be willing to betray his very master. To the very kiss that betrayed him in the garden. To the very fact that Jesus now gathers with his disciples at the table and Peter pipes up once again, pledging his faithfulness and his promise that no one, will be better than him by standing at his side. And yet Peter, over and over and over again, will fail his Lord. So we could join Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane as he sweat blood in that very fact as he was overwhelmed by what now lay before him. That as Jesus is now overcome by the sadness and sorrow and what he will now go through, that his disciples take a little nap in the corner, for they cannot stay awake for just a little bit of time. There are so many things that call out for our attention as our Lord throws himself headlong into our very salvation. But tonight, as we step into our sermon, that there is one that I just feel like I need to go ahead and clarify. One question or one issue that I always have every year, no matter how much I try. It's that question of what is Monday, Thursday anyway? <laughs> or as I heard, yes, I'm going to call him out, our principal this morning, three times Monday, Thursday. There's no A in it, Steve. There, there, there's no A at the end. <laughs> is it what is Monday, Thursday or Monday, Thursday? Those are two separate days of the week, just to let you know. We didn't like merge it. What is Maundy Thursday? But are there any great Latin, Latin speakers out there? You know, those that are just waiting to go ahead and polish up their Latin skills. Anybody out there? Is there anybody up front here that goes ahead and anyone knowing their Latin right up here is that I can just go ahead and try to call on some of you? No, no takers for some reason. So what is this Maundy Thursday thing? Is that it stands for mandatum, which simply means that this is commandment Thursday. That Jesus comes to bring two commandments to us today. That first, do this in remembrance of me as he places before us this gift of this meal of forgiveness and grace. And he calls us to come again and again to receive this very gift. But secondly, the very fact is, is that he gives that new commandment as he calls us to love one another. To love one another just as he loved us. So how far are those two commandments apart from one another? In your mind, how far away would you say those commandments are of one do this in remembrance, one go out and love? 
Well, Paul, in our reading today from 1 Corinthians, joins those two things together. That this is what Paul says. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? That the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Is that because there is one loaf, that we who are many are one body? For we all partake of the one loaf. See, what is it that Jesus desires for us to hear? What is it that Paul desires that we need to hear? The very fact is, is that we come to this very meal today. A meal that is not a one that is for individuals. One that is not just there for you to get your little own personal little wafer and your own little, your little shot of wine. It's not there for you to get your own little parts and then kind of scamper back to your seat. What is it that he says? That this is this meal for us all. That I don't know what you guys think like the pastors do during the week. You know, that we just wait till the weekend when we have to preach again or something. We don't sit around our offices and just kind of say, what do you think? You want to have communion today? Is it no? Is that we don't do this personally. We do this as a community. Because that is what our God invites us to. To this meal of community and connection. This meal that binds us together. This meal that joins us, not just Jesus, not just with Jesus. It isn't just me and Jesus' time. That it is our time as God's community to come together. But the question is, do we honor that? Do we recognize that? Do we display that in our lives? Do we recognize what it is that God desires to bring us together as his very See, this is what I love about the Gospel of Luke. The one commentator has pointed out that Jesus in the Gospel of Luke is either going to, currently at, or coming from some sort of meal together with others. I don't know about you, I like to eat. <laughs> I like to eat not just because I like the food, but I like the people that I gather together with. Those very people who are there together as that community. It is that very fact that Jesus comes to bring people together. But what is it that Jesus does? Jesus breaks all of the rules. He breaks all of the very things that were there. Is that mealtime was the very biggest, socially stratified, economically distant Gender dividing reality that who you ate with was not just a matter of who you were family with or who you were friends with. Who you ate with said what part of society you fit in and who you were and who you indeed were welcome with. But what does Jesus do? That Jesus goes from eating with the Pharisees to eating with the prostitutes. He goes and he eats with the religious leaders and he goes and he eats with the very sinners and tax collectors and everyone. Is that he breaks all the rules. Now what about you? Would you guys just go out into the street and start inviting people over to your house? Is that I want, to, I want you to think about a little trial. The next time that you're out fast food, I don't care, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Subway, whatever, I want you to go ahead and just cozy up to somebody else at their table. <laughs> just go ahead and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. Just go ahead and cozy up to their table and let's see how that conversation is going to go. I'm pretty sure they're going to look at you of the fact that I think that a you know, murderer just sat down with me. <laughs> a serial killer has just approached me. It is strange. But the fact is that how do we treat this table different? 
That we sometimes come here with little thought of the others who are coming here with us. With little thought of the fact that we have things that maybe we need to work out with one another. Is that maybe there are things of people that we need to confess our sins to. And others that may need to speak those words of forgiveness for. Or maybe there's simply that fact that we as a community of Christ can't simply just sneak in right before church starts and rush out right as that last hymn verse ends. Maybe we need to get to know one another a little better. I mean, if I were to go ahead and say, tonight when we come to communion, is that why don't we stand, joined arms together, recognizing the very fact of what God has given us. I know you're going to look at me and you're going to say, Pastor, that is weird. I know that. I'm not going to ask that of you. I've got First Communion kids that I can mess with. (laughs) See, those in the front row, I'm going to ask you guys, can you stand up real quickly? They're uncertain. They're looking at me like I'm a serial killer. (laughs) Can you guys stand up real quickly? Object lesson. You, you You guys can do it. Join together. All together, stand up. Those in the second row are like... Yes, I'll mess with them later. Don't worry. No, I'm kidding. See, I want you to join the arms together. Can you do that? Can you? Is that it's a girl, I understand, but you can do it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, boys, you can sit down. I know that this isn't going to happen. So this is what I want to happen. Is it McKenna, can you take a step forward? Abigail, can you try to sit down? Rebecca, can you just go ahead and take a step that way there? What's happening? What's going on? Is it our unity standing firm? No. See, you can sit down. Don't worry, two of them are my kids. I'll hear about it later. (laughs) See, the fact is that we forget that God has joined us together as one. He has linked us as the people of God, and in this very meal, He comes not just to grant you forgiveness, but He comes to restore and reconcile and bring us together. Yes, boys and girls, and all of those other things as well. See, the fact is is that Jesus desires to make us one. See, the early church had this weird thing that they did. If you read the letters of Paul at all, you'll hear about it. Paul will say, grant a kiss of peace to somebody, to so-and-so. See, it's believed that before communion, many times the church would share the kiss of peace with one another. I know post-COVID, some of you are like, I don't even want to shake people's hands. Is that, I don't know about this whole kiss of peace thing. Well, maybe some of the junior high boys are like, okay, <laughs> we could try this. But the fact is, that how do we understand that God has joined us as his people? But how often do we sometimes feel, well, I'm going to sit at this side of the church because I really don't get along with the person that sits on that side of the church. (laughs) That I've got to avoid that person because I still haven't forgiven them. Or I'm still remembering what that person did long ago. And yet we come to this table And we say, Jesus, I pray that you would forgive me. I'm not going to forgive them, but that's okay. How does that fit? That God invites you today to this very fact. Love one another just as I have loved you. That how did Jesus show his love for us? That he threw himself headlong into that very fact. That he went to that very anguish in the garden. That he gave himself up to the very betrayal of his closest friend. That he himself loved those who ran and fled and would run from him. That he went to that cross and that tree enduring the beatings and the mockings and everything else 
so that we may not only come to him, but may be joined with one another. That tonight our Lord extends that very invitation that my forgiveness is for you. (laughs) But we extend that same forgiveness as we turn to one another and extend that forgiveness to one another. So I'm going to have to ask you guys to forgive me. I know you didn't want to do that. Hopefully, you'll forgive me later. Otherwise, I'm not letting you up here. (laughs) I'm kidding. But indeed, our God has given us that blessing. And so may we indeed remember all that he has given. And so may we gather this night, on this night that he was betrayed, and celebrate all that he has given to us. And so at this time, I invite you to please pray with me. That Jesus, the depth of your love is astounding. Throughout the events of Holy Week, we see just how far you were willing to go to make us your own. That you ran, ran headlong into danger in order to rescue us from our disaster. Does that help us to slow down over these days ahead so that we may truly appreciate all that you went through, that all that you experienced, and all that you sacrificed so that we might receive your very gifts this night. All this we pray in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen.